All right, so moving forward, um, as I said in the intro to this particular episode, um, I'm happy to debut a new segment on the show today called Film Fights, where basically I just take two different films that are similar in one way or another, and I analyze them piece by piece in terms of like everything that goes into you know, making the film, such as like, you know, the acting and the storytelling and all that jazz. Kind of like what I do when I review individual movies, but instead I'm just um, pitting two different movies against each other. So the since this past weekend was indeed Easter weekend and I managed to watch both The Passion of the Christ and The Last Temptation of Christ in one weekend, I figured, you know what, let me start off this particular segment with doing those two films. So now this isn't to necessarily say which one is the best or at least my favorite movie to watch around Easter time. For me, personally, that movie was Ben-Hur, not the one that came out a few years ago, the one from the 1950s. That one is, an, is just a masterpiece and should just be left alone, shouldn't be made again. Um, and if you have three and a half hours, uh, it, I know it's a gigantic runtime, but if you have that amount of time, as well as attention span and patience, it's definitely worth the watch. It's an incredible film. Um, but going back to um, the two movies that I'm going to talk about today, um, they were both very controversial films when they were released, but that, that doesn't necessarily mean anything about like the quality of the films itself. They're both terrific movies. Um, they're both radically different approaches to similar subjects. Um, the Passion of the Christ, which came out in 2004, directed by Mel Gibson, this one focuses more on just the last 12 hours of Jesus Christ's life, um, including up to and including his brutal crucifixion. And as opposed to The Last Temptation of Christ, which was directed by Martin Scorsese, which is a fictitious approach to the life of Jesus Christ, which kind of theorizes the internal conflicts that he may or may he may not have carried throughout his entire life. Um, so now, again, with the ways that I'm going to compare and contrast these two different films and, I'm, and in the end pick out which one is you know my winner, um, I decided to do it in the categories of direction, writing, acting, music, and visuals. Um, so I'm just going to go piece by piece and just kind of like, you know, assign a checkpoint or, so, or yeah, just assign a point to um, each particular film for each particular category. So starting with the visuals. Now, these both these movies have a very um, distinct visual style, um, but there's something about The Passion of Christ that even though, or really, even though both these films like kind of feel... Um, haunting in the way they portray certain things. And I, I'm going to give the give a slight edge to The Passion of the Christ. And again, I don't know if that's just because um, the movie is a bit newer, so they had more of a chance to um, be up to date with more modern film technologies. But The Passion of the Christ, as much as these two, both these films were beautifully filmed and the production and costume design were absolutely outstanding, um, The Passion of the Christ in particular, not only... Um, has like some more haunting imagery in terms of its you know portrayal of the devil, but the makeup that they use and the angles that they were used to just capture every last bit detail of brutality that unfortunately was afflicted on Jesus Christ during his crucifixion is just you know heart wrenching and just like you know stomach churning and I can't help but admire that particular direction for which Mel Gibson decided to go into. So that the point for visuals, I'm going to give the edge to the Passion of the Christ. Um, in terms of music, the musical scores for both of these movies are terrific, um, but they, it's very weird. Like, I noticed, like, how much I like these particular score, but the one for The Passion of the Christ seems oddly familiar. Not even bad. I, it's, yeah, oddly familiar and oddly similar to that of The Last Temptation of Christ. And I just felt like when I was watching The Last Temptation of Christ, I definitely noticed the music more. It definitely just stood out to me more. So in terms of music, I'm going to give the edge to The Last Temptation of Christ. Um, in terms of acting, again, there are a couple different avenues um, to take a look at when it comes to the performances in this film. There's obviously that of the supporting cast in both of these films, and there's, of course, the um, main role, um, whichever actor decided was chosen to play Jesus Christ. Now, in terms of the supporting cast, um, I feel like they were about the same. And maybe, you know, I because I look at The Last Temptation of Christ, and Barbara Hershey, I think, gives one of the standout performances in the entire cast. Harvey Keitel was... Okay, I think he got like a Razzie nomination for Worst Supporting Actor. I don't know if I'd go that far for him, but it is a little hard for him to, I guess, kind of disappear into that role for whatever reason. Um, but at the same time, I look at the performances in The Passion of the Christ, 
And not only was the supporting cast, like, you know, very strong, Jim Caviezel played Jesus Christ in this, in The Passion of the Christ, as opposed to Willem Dafoe in The Last Temptation of Christ. And as great as Dafoe was in The Last Temptation of Christ, I could see him in the role. He blended in with the role very well. Jim Caviezel did that and then some, because, again, the vast majority of The Passion of the Christ is just the torture that Jesus Christ went through. And the main, the big reason as to why that works so well is in large part because of Jim Caviezel's performance. It's obviously a very demanding performance, and at the same time, it all the um, pain and suffering that's portrayed, like it never feels like you know gratuitous, it never feels like it's being overdone. It's just captivating, but at the same time, it's just searing in every sense of the word. And throughout like the entire duration of the film, Jim Caviezel, you, you, I couldn't help but feel, you know, just, <laughs> I, I couldn't help but feel like the, anguish and torment that you know Christ went through through um, the vehicle of Jim Caviezel's performance so I got to give the mainly for Jim Caviezel's performance he was absolutely terrific I got to give the edge in acting to the, the passion of the Christ now in terms of writing you know the storytelling with really this the narrative writing the screenplay um, I'm definitely giving the edge to the last temptation of Christ and the reason why is because the passion of the Christ yeah in turn in in terms of narrative, it definitely takes a more simple route. Um, and again, it feels like, I don't know if I'd say it feels like a bit more one note, but it definitely feels more focused on one aspect of the story of Jesus Christ. Uh, and even I, I look at the conversations and basically the dialogue between you know all, all the characters throughout the Passion of the Christ. And I can't say it's bad, so to say, maybe a tad bit dull or whatever, but it frails in comparison to that of The Last Temptation of Christ. Um, because I loved the angle that it went through, or that it went, or oh, excuse me, the angle that it took in portraying the life story of Jesus Christ. Um, I look at like a lot of the internal conflicts that were um, portrayed or really expressed throughout, like I said, just like the conversations between Christ, that what Christ had in all of his followers, um, between Christ and his followers, and... I just felt that more captivating, and I looked at, and I don't want to give away too much with this movie, because even though this movie is uh, about three decades old, um, there's a certain twist to it all that threw me for a loop, and while it felt weird while it was happening, like once the film ended, if I felt satisfied. I felt like it was absolutely worth it for that particular um, detour that they take. Um, so in terms of writing, I think The Last Temptation of Christ definitely has a very clear edge. Um, now, in terms of direction, um, this is tough. You know, Mel Gibson and Martin Scorsese are both very, very talented filmmakers. Um, like I said, they both took a lot of heat, a lot of controversy when it came to making these particular films. Martin Scorsese, in particular, had to, like, you know, take bodyguards with them to premiere events for The Last Temptation of Christ. I don't know if that's the same with Mel Gibson, but it wouldn't surprise me either way. Um, again, The Passion of the Christ definitely very much boasts the respect. It's very, it's very weird to say respectful brutality and how it portrays the last few hours of the life of Jesus Christ. But I got to give the edge to Martin Scorsese for The Last Temptation of Christ. And I very hard, and I very much tried to keep my own uh, personal, fate, personal um, preferences in between these directors out of the question here. But definitely with the direction that uh, Martin Scorsese took for The Last Temptation of Christ, there's something that felt, of course, it was, of course, a very experimental approach, but there's something that felt very mystical about it. While both films feel very scary, um, the mysticism that is injected more into Martin Scorsese's film, it brings it past the finish line just a bit quicker than The Passion of the Christ. So my winner for this very, very first film fight on the show is The Last Temptation of Christ.